This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Let's play hot and cold, I said to Fudge. You follow me, and when I get close to Tootsie, you say hot. And when I get far away from her, you say cold. Get it? I like games, Fudge said. Okay, ready? Ready. Let's go. I walked down the hall to the living room. Cold, 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 Fudge sang. I went into the kitchen. Cold, cold, cold. I walked into the front hall. Oh, hot! Oh, hot! Fudge cried. I opened the guest closet. Very hot! Watch out! You'll get burned! He jumped up and down, clapping his hands. Tootsie was on the floor of the closet, fast asleep in her infant seat. Mom scooped her up in her arms. Oh, thank goodness my little Tootsie Wootsie is all right! Mom put her back into her crib, and then she really let go. That was a very naughty thing to do! She shouted. I'm very angry at you, Fudge. But Tootsie likes to play. Have you hidden her before? Yes. You must never do that again. Do you understand? No. You can't carry her around that way. She's not heavy. But babies have to be carried in a special way. You mean like mother cats carry their kittens? Fudge asked. That's right, Mom told him. Fudge laughed. But you don't carry Tootsie in your mouth. No, I don't. But I do carry her very carefully to protect her. Do you love me, Mommy? Yes, very much. Then get rid of Tootsie, Fudge said. I'm sick of her. She's no fun. Some day she'll be fun, and she'll be able to play hide and seek with you. But you have to wait. She's not ready yet. I don't want to wait. I want you to get rid of her now. Tootsie is our baby. I'm your baby. You're my little boy. No, I'm your baby. All right, Mom said. You're my baby, too. Then pick me up like you do Tootsie. Mom opened her arms and Fudge jumped up into them. He rested his head on Mom's shoulder, shoved his fingers into his mouth, and slurped on them. I know it's stupid. But just for a minute, I wished I could be Mom's baby again, too. After that, whenever we had company, Fudge tried to sell Tootsie. You like the baby? he'd ask. Oh, yes, she's just adorable. You can have her for a quarter. When that didn't work, he tried to give her away. We have a baby upstairs, and you can have her for free, he'd say to anyone on the street. When that didn't work, he tried to pay to have someone take her away. I'll give you a quarter if you take her to your house and never bring her back. He tried that with Sheila Tubman. My mother told me when I was born, Libby wanted to get rid of me, too, Sheila said. Who could blame her, I thought. But she got over it, and so will you, she told Fudge. Fudge kicked Sheila. Then he ran down the hall. Sheila stood over Tootsie's crib. Lucky for her she doesn't look like you, Peter. What's that supposed to mean, I said. Look in the mirror sometime. Coochie, coochie, coo, she said to Tootsie. We talk to her like she's a regular person, I said. But she's not a regular person, Sheila told me. She's a baby. So, you don't have to make those stupid noises at her. But she likes them. Watch this. If I tickle her under her chin, she smiles. It just looks like she's smiling, but really, it's gas. Oh, no. Tootsie is smiling just for me. Aren't you, you precious little thing? It did look like Tootsie was smiling, but why would anybody smile at Sheila Tubman, even a baby? That night, Fudge climbed into Tootsie's crib. I'm the baby, he said. Ga, ga, ga. Dad lifted him out of the crib. You're a big boy. You sleep in a big boy bed. No, I'm not a big boy. I'm a baby. Wah, wah, wah. I decided it was time to have a little talk with the kid. So I said, hey, Fudge. You want me to read you a story? Yes. Okay, get into bed and I'll be right there. I brushed my teeth and put on my pajamas. When I got to Fudge's room, he was sitting up in bed with his favorite book spread out across his lap. Arthur, the anteater. Read, he said. I sat down next to him. Aren't you tired of acting like a baby? I asked. No. I thought you wanted to be like me. I do. Well, you can't be a baby and be like me, too. Why not? 
because babies can't do anything. They just eat and sleep and cry. They aren't even interesting. Then why does everybody think Tootsie's so great? Because she's new. They'll get tired of her pretty soon. It's better to be older. Why? We get more privileges. What's privileges? It means we get to do things she can't do. Like what? Like staying up late and um, watching TV and all sorts of things. I don't get to stay up late. You do. That's because I'm the biggest brother. But you'll get to stay up later than Tootsie. When? When she's four and you're eight, then you'll get to stay up a lot later. And you'll go to school, and you'll know how to read and write, and she won't. And, uh... Read, Fudge said, sliding down under the covers. Will you stop trying to be a baby? I asked. I'll think about it. Well, that's better than nothing, I said. Fudge fell asleep before I'd finished the book. I pulled up his covers and turned out his light. Then I went into the bathroom and studied myself in the mirror. What was Sheila Tubman talking about? I looked the same as always. And why did she think Tootsie was lucky not to look like me? Unless it was my ears. Lately, they seemed too big. I tried holding them flat against the side of my head. Not bad, I thought. Maybe I could tape them back every morning before school. But that would be a lot of trouble. If I grew my hair longer, I could hide them. Yes, that's what I'd do. Grow my hair until it covered my ears. I yawned. When I yawn while I'm looking in the mirror, I can see my tonsils. I went to my room, got into bed, and fell asleep. Who cared what Sheila Tubman thought anyway?